Hi guys, my name is Emily. Welcome to my August wrap-up. I did not have a very good reading month in August. Unless I'm allowed to count the numerous times that I read through my 120 page thesis project, because it was just reading it over and over and over again, editing it, preparing for the defense. <laughs> so not much else got read, especially after I opened my August with Harry Potter and the Cursed Child. I do have a discussion for this linked down below. This just put me in the biggest reading slump, like everything I picked up afterwards uh, I couldn't focus on. I just kept thinking about this and how disappointing it was. The one thing I would like to correct from my discussion video is that I talked about queer baiting in the text and how the queer baiting disappointed me, which participated in bi erasure. For me to view these characters as heterosexual opposed to bisexual sort of reinscribes the homosexual heterosexual binary that doesn't acknowledge that bisexuality is a real thing. Do I buy that that's what Rowling was doing when she made that decision to have a heteronormative ending? No. Just based on Rowling's history with queer characters, I feel like my reading of the text as queer baiting has decent legs to stand on, but I guess it's also important to acknowledge that alternative reading, that certain characters are actually bisexual and that their choice to have a heteronormative relationship is perfectly legitimate and still queer. So that's really all I have to say about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child at this point in time. It was requested that I talk about some of the other things, the Harry Dumbledore relationship and the love potion. I am working on putting videos together for that, but I have so many things like pre-scheduled and pre-filmed at this point that it's gonna take me a little while to get there, but trust me, I am working on it. The next thing that I read also didn't help with the reading slump, and that was Aberat by Clive Barker. I remember really, really liking this as a kid. This isn't an illustrated edition. The ones I had as a kid were illustrated. I love the illustrations, I love the story, I love the wacky world. This time everything fell short. Everybody keeps talking about how candy is like super duper special, but it's unclear why? Basically every man that interacts with Candy is weird and sexual, like there's a lot of like pedophilic feelings in here and it was really uncomfortable. I read it for a book club. Reading this we talked about whether or not this is children's literature, like who is the target market of this? Because I mean the weird wacky fantastic world, the child narrator would indicate that it's children's literature but some of the themes are pretty heavy. So the sort of rapey, violent, um, abusive aspects of this book that aren't critically addressed make me wonder who it's for. Like, I feel like it's fine to include mature topics for young people if an author is going to address them in some sort of critical way, like to introduce this topic in order to dissect it. To use literature as a teaching tool is incredibly important, it's incredibly effective, and I feel like that's not really what was happening here. It almost felt like, reading it this time, that Clive Barker had this really cool wacky world in mind with the um, 12, or the 25 islands that are each a different time, and then he didn't know what to do with this like really cool mental image and sort of forced a story into his fantasy world, opposed to the other way around, like having a story, having a purpose, and sort of building a world around it. I know a lot of people love these. I have really fond memories of these, and I was really looking forward to picking this up, especially after Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, and uh, it was just kind of a letdown. Then to get myself out of the reading slump and to stop thinking about Harry Potter and the Cursed Child by thinking about Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire and how the Cursed Child narrative meshes with this. I returned to the Harry Potter world for reassurances that I liked this thing, that I liked JK Rowling, that I liked Harry Potter. With Cursed Child I'm unable to suspend my disbelief to fit that narrative into this narrative. So reading this was a fun way to return to the canon, to kind of assure myself that I like this world. And I mean it was fun to pick this up again. Uh, this is my second rereading of this book this year alone, because thesis, always thesis. But this time I was actually reading it for fun, not for thesis. It was a lot more leisurely, it didn't involve taking notes, and I did really enjoy this. 
and Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire brought me to the end of August where the night before the book club meeting I read the book. And so this is Monkey Beach by Eden Robinson. This is a piece of Canlit. Um, it's indigenous literature and it is so amazing. This, I think, is my favorite book of 2016 thus far. It tells the story of Lisa, who is a young indigenous girl. Um, it starts with her as a young adult and her brother has gone missing in a boating accident. And the narrative is very fragmented, it skips around in time, goes back to Lisa's childhood and sort of tells the childhood narrative in a semi-linear way while skipping back and forth between present Lisa and past child Lisa. It's not overly descriptive, it's not super dense, and yet what is there gives you such a vivid idea of characters and the setting. We ended up talking about this in the book club. Myself and one of the other book club members are very visual readers. Um, we have like stock footage for the film that's happening in our heads. For both of us, the descriptions of the house, even though they were sparse, used none of our stock footage, which I thought was really cool. The writing in Robinson's text is beautiful. It is so, so beautiful. It's a heartbreaking story. Her way with words, her way of sparse but vivid description carries over into her characters too. All of these little side characters that come up, you maybe don't know much about them, but they feel fleshed out. I am planning on doing a review for this, but yeah, I cannot praise this enough and I cannot recommend this enough. This was phenomenal. So even though I only read for books in August, I do feel that I accomplished quite a bit. I feel quite proud of myself for having accomplished even this much while in the final stages of my thesis project. I've lost the light, so clearly it's time to wrap up for the day, to wrap up for this video. Let me know in the comments down below what your favorite read was this August. If you want to keep up with what I'm reading, links for all of my social media are in the description box down below. I'm particularly interested in Instagram. I enjoy that the most, and I am probably the most active on there. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you soon. Bye!